Hi, everybody. So good to be with you today. Thanks for joining us for these encouraging words together. I so appreciate the opportunity we have here at Friendship Village and wherever else you might be as you tune in with us. The, the opportunity we have of just pausing wherever we are to take a moment to join our hearts in faith before the Lord, to turn to him in prayer, to receive from him through his word some strength. There is always encouragement to be found every time we turn to the Lord and learn to trust in him. Thanks for tuning in today. As uh, we take a moment to share together, I want to talk for just a few minutes about the importance of what we do and the importance of who we are. Those are intricately connected ideas, but they don't, uh, they don't have, uh, they don't mean exactly the same thing. Here's, uh, here's what I mean when I say that. Oftentimes, people will introduce themselves, and very early in the conversation, someone might ask, well, what is it that you do? We tend to live in a society that defines itself by performance. So we might tell someone, I'm, my name is so-and-so, and oh, I'm a doctor, or I'm a teacher, or I'm a, uh, I work in this profession, or that profession, or this is how I've spent my years and my time. And there is a sense in which God certainly has a vocation for us, part of his plan, where we would serve, how we would touch others through that service is, of course, very important. But those things aren't meant to fully define who we are. Here's why. What we do is temporal. We do it for a season. Who we are meant to be is eternal. And there's something about espousing the virtues of Christ, walking in his image, allowing um, his presence to shape us and direct us as we become the kind of people that he has meant for us to be all along. That is meant to have lifelong impact regardless of what I do. For uh, many years, I was active in individual church ministry. I started off in the early years as a youth pastor. Then I was an associate pastor. And then I was the senior pastor at a local church for a very long time. And today, in a new chapter of my life, and for the last several years, I've served as the chaplain director here at Friendship Village. And I hope to do that for a very long time. My point is, though I have had similar functions in each of those roles, those roles were each different. They required different sets of skills, different, um, uh, different ways of serving. And, uh, and so I have grown and developed through those serving in various capacities. Along the way, I've held many other positions that have not always been ministry related by intent. I was uh, a church janitor for a while. I wallpapered homes uh, right out of high school. I, um, I served as a custodian in an early learning center and scrubbed toilets every night. Um, I have taken on various capacities through the, through the years. I have taken side jobs, writing curriculum and other things. The things that we do are temporal. They don't last. And there comes a stage in life where we might retire or we might grow past a certain position or we might transition from one industry to another. Having said that, what we do is, of course, important. And it's important to have work that serves a place of dignity and significance. But all of those abilities and talents and skills, those areas of employment and vocation, they will come to an end. Life transitions. But who we are called to be in the presence of God, people that love him and love others, that's not meant to ever change. We can grow in it. We can develop. We can become stronger. But those lifelong aspects we're meant to embrace with all we are. I give all that background to kind of illustrate the point of the Apostle Peter in his first letter. He was writing to followers of Jesus who had become scattered across the region because of persecution. You might remember in the book of Acts in the 8th chapter, the, the followers of Jesus were primarily centered in the city of Jerusalem. And then persecution broke out and they began to, to, to escape for their, with their lives. And they travel all over the Judean countryside, throughout Samaria, 
um, and really to the what the Bible calls the uttermost parts of the earth in that day, um, all the way into Europe, Africa, and beyond. And so Peter decided to write a letter to encourage those folks, excuse me, to encourage those folks. He did that uh, after some time. In fact, the time between Acts chapter 8 and the time of the writing of Peter's first letter is more than 30 years. And so he, he wrote, wrote to encourage them. Because when you're off and isolated, and as time goes on, it's easy to forget who you're meant to be. And so Peter writes to this group of believers who mostly had a Jewish background but had come to a place of faith in Christ Jesus. And he works to encourage them, to strengthen them. Many of them had been separated with no other folks around them but that, that, that lived the same way or trusted in Jesus the same way. They didn't share the same history as their neighbors in these foreign lands. And so it was easy in those moments to feel like, am I out here all alone? And Peter reminds them in the second chapter of his first letter, in verse 9, he says, But you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He reminds them of who they are. He reminds them of their purpose. Sometimes life will send us um, into places and around corners that we didn't always anticipate. And life can change in terms of how we function and what we do. And the daily activities of our, our lives may not be today what they once were. It doesn't mean that today can't be good though. And Peter reminds these people that they had been separated from the rest of their people. They were still together a holy nation. They still belonged to God. God still had a purpose for them. Their lives were meant to give ever praise, to, to be a continual offering of praise to the Lord, the one who had brought them out of the darkness of sin and separation and into the marvelous light of his love. May we hold on to our purpose. May we never forget who God has called us to be. Though life sometimes will bring us moments of difficulty, though we may not be doing today what we used to do, we still have purpose. God still has a plan. We are yet meant to belong to him. And we are meant to see ourselves as his special uh, possession. We belong, if we trust in Christ, we belong to the Lord who never leaves us, never forsakes us, who stays with us day in and day out, leading us, guiding us, directing us, f uh, f f filling us with purpose, direction, and a mission. Though our roles might change, our ultimate purpose never does. And may we continue to hold on to uh, how we've been designed, to love God, to love people, and to live a life that ever gives him praise for his marvelous work in us. And with that thought, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we reach out to you today with a heart of thanksgiving. You're a God who stays right by our side. You continually woo us to yourself. You lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. When we hurt, you bring us healing. When we're in despair, you bring us comfort. And even in the hardest moments, Lord, you come with your, your wonderful, sweet presence and you sustain us. And you give us a peace and a hope to endure and to do so with a sense of joy and thanksgiving. Though our function may change, though our, our active role of what we do for a living or what we do in our daily activities, though that might vary from time to time and with the season of life, we thank you that you have designed us with an ongoing purpose to love you, to love others, and to live in such a way that our lives ever give you praise. May we not forget that you call us to be a holy people, your own special possession, that our lives might reflect your goodness in all we do. Thank you for the hope we always find in you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. Here at Friendship Village, we work hard to show you these videos three times a day. This video airs at 4.30 in the afternoon. It will repeat at 8 o'clock tonight, and then again, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We do that every day, Monday through Friday. We also make these videos available online on YouTube. And you can go to youtube.com backslash the at symbol FVC Chaplain and find our webpage where it includes not only all of our uh, Encouraging Words videos now as we post them there, but also our services, our hymn sings, our Bible studies, our memorial services, and more. Either under the video tab or under the live tab, you'll find the archive of all those events. Feel free to check that out at your leisure. So good to spend this moment with you. If you're watching online, consider whom you might send this video link to and uh, be a, a way of encouraging them. You can click on this circle to subscribe to these videos and be notified when new ones show up or click on the box below to see any of these encouraging word videos from our history. God bless you today. Have a great day in the Lord. We'll see you next time.